Hey everyone, the name is Ozzy Flowell. The two Portal games are considered by many to be Valve's best titles, and it's not hard to see why. With their solid gameplay loop and iconic characters such as GLaDOS, Wheatley and Cave Johnson, the unique and interesting puzzle elements that make up a test chamber, and the many bits of lore sprinkled throughout the Aperture facility. With these factors considered, it's no doubt that people really do want to see more of the universe. With Aperture's death job fresh in everyone's mind, in a recent interview with the series writer Eric Wolpaw, whereas he says he wishes he could write for Portal 3, interest for a third Portal game seems to be at an all-time high once again. Though, you've read the title of this video and you've seen the thumbnail, and I can already hear everyone rushing to the comments to start typing angrily about why I'm wrong or how the video is clickbait. Yes, I genuinely do not believe that we need a third Portal game. You'd think the self-proclaimed Portal lore master, being myself, would really want to see Portal 3 happen, but I really genuinely do not. So, before you argue your reasons about why I'm completely wrong and why we do deserve a third Portal game, hear me out here. This is my personal opinion, and it shouldn't be a personal attack on your ideals. If you want to endlessly hype yourself for a game that's never been confirmed to exist, unlike a certain other third Valve game, be my guest. So with all that sorted, I'd like to ask the one question that people immediately pose as the reasoning for why Portal 3 should exist. Did Portal 2 really leave us with any cliffhangers? Portal's ending is the one thing that many people point to as being a cliffhanger. GLaDOS performs an opera piece to Chell, sings to her alongside the effort of many turrets, and brings Chell up to the surface. The exit elevator leads to a wheat field, and then GLaDOS tosses Chell the companion cube she incinerated in Portal 1. A lot of people cite this ending as a cliffhanger, which... Excuse me? I think that Portal's ending is possibly the best way the Portal series could have concluded. Not only has GLaDOS made peace with you being her equal, possibly even superior, but she even had the chance to kill you right there and she simply doesn't, because GLaDOS knows we'll find a way to escape anyways. The entire ending is showing that while GLaDOS now views us as a friend, she just wants us gone now for the benefit of both Chell and herself. People also do point to Greek mythology during this section, saying how Chell rising up onto a wheat field alongside something they can consider a friend is an analogy of Chell having been discreetly killed by the first four turrets and the rest of the ending being a serenation as she ascends into Elysium. The problems with this theory is that Elysium is never described as being a wheat field and you aren't brought to it alongside any form of singing. I have no clue where people got this misconception from. To wrap this back around onto how people think this ending is a cliffhanger, People seem to think that Chell is exiting Aperture onto an Earth that's still ruled and controlled by the Combine, when we have multiple direct confirmations that Portal 2 is meant to be far enough in the future for this to not be the case. I'm not saying how long it's been since I know people in the comments have started a fight over it, and most it's 50,000 years by the way. What I'm saying is that from the perspective of a character arc, it would not be satisfying to go from the wonderful ending of Portal 2 to... Chell getting absolutely blasted by a Strider because she has no weapons. Yeah, that would be incredibly jarring for the Portal series. The unfortunate truth that Chell and Gordon ever crossing paths is best left to the realm of fanfiction and the like. Hell, I'm not going to stop you from doing that if you want. It's a cool concept, just not really viable to exist as a game. Another thing people seem to want is for Wheelie to return, and I don't blame them for wanting more since he's incredibly well written in Portal 2 with his many layers of stupidity to make up his character. However, Wheatley being banished to space sort of is meant to represent his end as a character. Unless you blue sky your way into creating a finicky scenario where, I don't know, Wheatley somehow survives being hit by a meteor and going up in flames as he crashes back on Earth, I don't think it'd be viable to bring back Wheatley either. Harry 101 UK fans, I can see you typing about the going home animation. That's also a really contrived way to bring Wheatley back. So we've not had the possibility of Chell and Wheatley returning. That leaves us with GLaDOS. GLaDOS seems obvious to return with Portal 3, right? She's deleted Carolyn from her systems, and with the Portal 2 cooperative campaign, she's just gotten access to a massive vault featuring hundreds upon thousands of test subjects. That's a proper cliffhanger right there, isn't it? Well... The moral of the story is all the humans are dead. So it looks like it's up to you two, Marshmallows. Yeah, Co-op Course 6, which happens after the Human Vault discovery, shoots that all down. Now that I mentioned Course 6, I know some people are now going to ask, what about the birds? Are they going to be Portal 3 instead? And to that I say, what the fuck is wrong with you? On a similar note to Wheatley, I'd say GLaDOS also had a satisfying character arc. Anything that tries to utilize her further just brings about new issues to deal with. Or making her evil again just feels wrong. The LEGO Dimensions Portal levels especially rubbed in the wrong way the way GLaDOS is portrayed there. She's just written so... fanfiction-y. You. I thought the elevator from Test Chamber 93 went to the incinerator. Party. Cake. Location. Not exactly the best representation of GLaDOS. So, with the titular characters of Portal 2 unable to be brought back, whether it's just story conflicts, preserving the ends of character arcs, or an unnecessary forced return of the character, 
It feels like the case could simply close there, but Valve has recently introduced a wild card. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Cave Johnson out of all these characters has the biggest shot to return as primary character in Portal 3, and that's all thanks to Aperture Desk Job. If you haven't played Desk Job already, find the nearest controller and play it right now, pause the video and come back when you're done. Anyways, Cave Johnson is revealed in Aperture Desk Job to have been transferred to a robot body just like Carolyn. With a clear motive established for him to try and take over Aperture once more after landing in his pile of trash, where he's forever accompanied with toilet turrets for the rest of his existence. Surely, with Val's previous attempts at making Cave Johnson a villain of a story, both in the F Stop era of Portal 2 and the scrapped DLC concept for the final game, Aperture Death Drop created the perfect setup for Cave to make a bombastic return of Portal 3 as the antagonist, right? Oh, right, the writer of Aperture Death Drop said it's not canon. That, and it kind of ruins the whole point of the final rant we hear Cave Johnson go on and about in Portal 2, being his absolute rock bottom, where a man is so depraved of success in his own delusions of how science works that he lashes out at a world for lack of victory, only pleading in the hope that he can be brain mapped to computer so he can survive for eternity. Instead, we only hear Cave's final words being an analogy for the failures he faced in life, where life only gave him lemons, and it only ends with him having made lemonade, achieving nothing. Wow, that got unnecessarily deep there. Can you tell I really like how Cave Johnson's character arc played out in Portal 2? I think it'd be a shame to see a 180 turn occur and have Cave miraculously have survived and be brain mapped to a computer. After Death Job doing it was fine since it considered an the universe, just like the pure intellect Cave Johnson's in a perpetual testing initiative voice lines in Portal 2. But that's a story for another video. We're here to talk about Portal 3. Now let's put the characters aside. I think a key component in many people's idealized Portal 3 comes from the scenarios they envision the game taking place in. Chell find the Combine using her portal gun. Chell find at the Wayfield simulation and she's still stuck in Aperture. Personally, I'm not a fan of anything that tries to overextend Chell's story for the sake of it. Though, I'm leaving out the most common idealized Portal 3 scenario I've seen, being a prequel set in old Aperture during its prime, where Cave Jonathan was still alive and the facility was up and running. A lot of these ideas have their own strengths and weaknesses. The prequel idea especially. Valve considers the older Aperture levels in Portal 2 to be sort of like a prequel. You would still learn about the same things about older Aperture even as hypothetical Portal 3. Unless Valve massively changed something, it doesn't seem too likely as much you could explore. The weak field simulation and chill fighting combine ideas both some of similar problems. The simulated weak field was actually utilized in Thinking with Time Machine, a mod for Portal 2, and it directly highlights why the idea doesn't work. Okay, so the simulation and chill is still in Aperture. Now what? More test chambers I guess? See, it's an effective hook that lacks a solid reels to back it up. There's nothing really satisfying story-wise you can create out of the weak field simulation concept. Similarly, fighting Combine forces using the portal gun sounds cool, but it can only go so far with dropping them through portals, or dropping things onto them using portals. Maybe you can shoot a gun through a portal? Yeah, just none of this is really working. This is leading onto a main problem with Portal 3. Where do you take the portal gameplay style? Portal 2 introduces so many new mechanics and ideas, streamlines the gameplay loop compared to its predecessor, and all around essentially puts the finishing touches on what was already a very solid mechanic. A third Portal game would need to build off the newfound base created in Portal 2, and unlike other game series created by Valve, introducing a new gun isn't going to help it. It's a gargantuan task that would be nigh impossible to do, even for the multi-billion dollar corporation that is Valve. Portal 2 is peak perfection in the Portal series, you simply just can't try and scale it back or add more onto it. Essentially speaking, Portal 3 would either need to reinvent the wheel and come up with a new mechanic that supplements everything perfectly, such as the mod Portal Reloaded's Time Portal mechanics, or ditch portals entirely and go with a new concept such as... Uh, F-Stop. Look, I held off on mentioning F-Stop for a good long while. It wouldn't make a good portal sequel in any capacity. The mechanic is incredibly shallow and doesn't feature much unique puzzle opportunity to it like portals do. Being able to place an object wherever you look at a varying size depending on the perspective of the object a la Superliminal is not exactly the most innovative breakthrough that Valve could do for a third portal game. Remember, they couldn't even make it work for the second game. What makes you think it'll be different from Portal 3? At the same time though, F-Stop feels like it fit the bill for Portal 3. It's a prequel that, that would star Cave Johnson as the antagonist, it could link it to Aperture Death Job, but its central core mechanic just sucks on a fundamental level that can't be extended to fit a whole puzzle game. Especially one that we follow up on the incredible blockbuster success of Portal 2. So where does it leave us with Portal 3 concepts? I decided to ask my fans on both Twitter and my Discord to see if they had any ideas, since frankly, the candle that was alight in my younger self's heart for Portal 3 had long died out. And a lot of the responses I got seemed to follow the same similar tropes I already covered, placing Chell in the midst of 17 or exploring all the apertures in your protagonist. Interestingly, a lot of the responses I got were concepts that people wanted to see explored in a Portal 3 rather than an overarching idea for how to make it work in continuity, which makes sense. 
People suggested ideas such as a 4 player co op mode, a more robust level editor compared to the one in Portal 2 currently, some wanted VR and other ones with more lore. I thought over suggested ideas and I very quickly realised people's ideas for Portal 3 were that they just wanted more Portal. All these concepts were stuff that Valve definitely wasn't going to explore and stretch out over a 7 hour long game. No one seems to have any common agreement as to what Portal 3 should be like, and anything Valve tries to come up with is going to be met with disappointment from some people. It's incredibly hard to live up to what the jump from Portal 1 to Portal 2 was like. I like the ever-hyped Half-Life 3, there is no cliffhanger, no obvious direction for series to go towards to reach a conclusion, there is no real room to create the trilogy. These are all aspects that Half-Life 3 seems to perfectly overcome due to the way it was always meant to be a trilogy. Episode 2 creates a perfect cliffhanger to continue into a third game. The location of gold for the player is natural to Borealis, and a first person shooter is a much more malleable formula compared to Portal's puzzle focus. The hype for Half-Life 3 makes sense, but the Portal 3 hype doesn't. Stepping back, what do people really want? Plain and simply, they just want more Portal, and I think looking towards Valve is the incorrect choice here. If Valve had ever wanted to commit to a Portal 3, I don't think they would have given us a level editor that doesn't require a complex understanding of how it works to create good puzzles. Alongside Portal 2's development tools being available, such as Hammer, Valve essentially has given people the keys to make their own new Portal content, and we've seen how successful this is for both parties. The community has ended up with mods like Portal Stories Mail and Portal Reloaded, amazing upcoming mods of Portal Desolation, created by teams of community members coming together to create products on par or even better than the original game. Many mods even ended up on Steam and were endorsed by Valve, and hey, why wait for the many upcoming mods to come out, there's an endless supply of content via the Portal 2 workshop with level editor in game. Who knows, maybe you could even make some levels yourself for fun. We don't need a Portal 3, because there is no way for Valve to take the story without introducing a whole sleuth of retcons that could very easily disappoint loyal fans, and the gameplay structure has been perfected with the sequel. Instead, the end supply content we see coming from the modding scene creates a perfect supplement. There's dozens upon dozens of new Portal mods in development based at all times, so stick around. If you want more Portal games, you'll be getting it if you just look towards the community. You can play some really high quality content like Rigzora or Portal Reloaded on Steam, Mods like Factum Solar is found on ModDB, or even some smaller scale map pack experience on the Portal 2 workshop, such as Design for Danger. And with that, I'll leave it to you all. Instead of simply porting Portal 2 back into the metaphorical shelf of your Steam library to collect digital dust, wishing for a third game, why don't you take it out and play some fantastic community generated content? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.